Welcome to our lecture online. Perhaps you didn't like Kramer's rule that much, but perhaps you will like the Roy Ashland form. We're going to do the very same problem we did on the previous video, but instead of using Kramer's rule and determinants, we're going to use the Roy Ashland form. I've already got the three equations on the board, the very same three equations we solved in the previous video, but now we're going to put them into a matrix format that looks like this. It's called the augmented matrix. Over here, we're going to put all the coefficients of x, y, and z. So we have 1, negative 1, and 0. Here we have 0, 1, and 3. Here we have 2, 0, and negative 1. Over here, we're going to put the three constants, negative 1, 1, and negative 7. And what we're trying to do now is we want to get 1's across the diagonal, and here we want all zeros. Notice I picked a fairly simple problem to do that with, but at least it will illustrate how it's done. The first thing you want to do is get a 1 here. If this is not already a 1, let's say that was a 2, then you want to divide everything in this row by 2 to turn it into a 1. But since it's already a 1, we don't have to do anything. Then the next thing we want to do is turn this into a 0 and turn this into a 0. Of course, that's already a 0, so again, we don't have to do anything but we want to turn this into a zero. So that means we're going to take the third row, row three, and replace it by the negative of this number, negative two, times the row with the one in it, which is R1, and add it to row three. When we do that, this will turn into a zero. That's the goal. So we're going to rewrite the entire matrix. Notice that row one and row two do not change. So that means we end up with a one, a negative one, and a 0, and we get a negative 1 over there, we end up with a 0, a 1, and a 3, and that becomes a 1. So now, notice what happens. If I take this and multiply times the negative 2, this becomes negative 2, add it to 2, that gives me 0. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2, add it to 0, gives me a positive 2. Negative 2 times 0 is still 0, add it to negative 1 is a negative 1. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2, added to negative 7 is a negative 5. So notice I've accomplished what I wanted, I have a 1, 0, 0. Now the next thing I need to do is turn this into a 1. But since it's already 1, I don't need to do anything, so now I'm going to turn this into a 0. Alright, to do that, we're going to take the third row and replace it by the negative of this number, negative 2, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R1, and adding it to R3. That will get this, turn that into a 0. Which means our matrix will then be rewritten as follows. Nothing changes on row 1, 1, negative 1, 0, and negative 1. Nothing changes for row 2, 0, 1, 3, and a positive 1. And on the third row, notice this is already 0. Negative 2 times Oh, that is wrong. It should be the second row because that's the row with the 1 in it. I set the 1 and I thought I was thinking about 1 there, but that's not the case. I'm going to multiply negative 2 times the row with the 1 in it, which is the second row, and add it to row 3. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, add it to 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, add it to negative 1, which is negative 7. And negative 2 times the 1 is negative 2, add it to negative 5 is negative 7. All right, we're almost there, because the next thing we want to do is turn this into a 1. To do that, we can take the third row and replace it by negative 1 over 7 times the third row. In other words, multiplying everything in that row by negative 1 over 7, or the same thing as dividing by negative 7. When we do that, this and this will turn into 1s. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice we have a 1 again. Row 1 and row 3 do not change. We have a 1, a negative 1, a 0, and a negative 1. Here we have a 0, a 1, a 3, and a 1. And here we have 0 and 0. But notice negative 7 divided by negative 7 is 1. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is 1. And notice I have 1s across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Now let me rewrite that over here because it's easier to look at it then. We have a 1, a negative 1, and a 0, and a negative 1. We have a 0, 1, 3, and a positive 1, and we have a 0, 0, 1, and 1. And notice this is the x column, the y column, and the z column. 
looking at the third row, I have 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals 1. So we end up with z is equal to 1, and there we found one of our variables. Now we go to the second row, and I get 0x plus 1y plus 3z. So we have 1y plus 3z is equal to 1. But z is 1. I can then replace z by 1. I get y plus 3 times 1 is equal to 1, or y is equal to 1 minus 3, or y is equal to negative 2. And that's how I find my second variable. Now I'm ready to find my third variable. So I take the top row, I get x minus y plus 0z is equal to negative 1. And I can replace y by negative 2. So x minus a minus 2 plus 0, because 0 is simply 0, equals negative 1. Or x plus 2 equals negative 1. Bring the 2 across, I get x equals negative 1 minus 2, or x equals negative 3. And there's my third variable. So notice by using the row echelon form, meaning 1's across diagonals and 0's on this side of the diagonal, I can then interpret that for z, for y, and for x. First, z is simply right there as the result, z equals 1. To find y, I simply replace 3 times z by 3 times 1. And here, to find x, I simply replace y and z by what those are equal to. Of course, in this case, I didn't have to worry about the z because it was 0 times z. And you can simply read that from the three rows representing the three equations reduced to the row echelon form. And that is how it's done. Pretty slick method, don't you think? Don't like it? <laughs> you like substitution and elimination. I like this method. It's kind of neat. I always amazes how it works. All right. So on the next video, we're going to do the reduced row echelon form to see what that looks like.